Hello everybody, this is Haven, and um, I was going through some YouTube and looking at some different things, and I ran across these things called speed art. And what it is, is just somebody creating something, and they um, record themselves doing it, they up the speed 100%, and then post it. And what we get to see is basically them showing off, which is really cool. There's some really creative people out there making some amazing things, and uh, although this isn't a tutorial, it does let us see, you know, how something is created step by step, watching the artist um, work, you know, through the design and the techniques and the styles that they're using um, aren't always obvious. Uh, but when you slow it down and you really um, start to understand that this is all being done with just basic tools, it's pretty amazing. Um, so this artist does this complete build down a, down a block with different buildings and all kinds of detail to it. But, um, oh, not but. They also go and do the uh, cycles afterwards. And here is that. This is the cycles rendering on uh, and texturing of their build it's old it's a little dilapidated you can see that um you know there's torn apart paint up here and looks like a sign is maybe broken just all kinds of things anyhow i thought that this would be a great thing for blender beginners to see even intermediate or um, more experienced blenders to watch. What I'm going to do is probably not the entire build, but I will be doing portions of it to let you see the way different things are made. Maybe a few ways of using tools um, in more advanced ways or more intermediate ways, but they are still all just basic tools. There are a couple exceptions, and I will hopefully after a while get to those as well. So this is going to be one of those tutorials where I'll tell you at the end of the one segment to go off and make it and then come back for the next one and make that one. And hopefully by the time you just get a few in, you know, you do just a few of them that you follow along, that you'll be off and running and making your own and creating your own design and stuff like that. Uh, I'll be really interested to see what you guys um, actually end up coming up with. So let's just go ahead and get started and I'm going to stop this and let me close that down. And here we have my blender. I'm going to use my cursor in the middle. I do have a reason for some movements I'm going to make in a minute. They're not really important, but I'll show you them anyways. It's just food for thought as you create your own items. Shift and A to bring in a mesh plane. It's laying down, so I'm going to rotate it RX 90 degrees. I'm going to move it up on the Z axis because I don't like working on something that's half under the grid. So G, Z, one point, enter. That moves it up one full blender unit. Moved it from here up to here. I'm also going to move it to the side. So G, X, one point, enter key. Uh, the reason that I did that is because I'm going to be using this basically as a uh, starting point for a small measurement. As we go through this, this part of the build is going to remain the same, two feet tall. Um, let me show you the picture again real quick. So we're going to be working on this part here. And here's the doorway. So this is probably about six feet, which means this is probably about eight feet, if not more. Um, I'm going to start making mine off all about two feet, and if I want to make it bigger later on, I can. But just for now, uh, scale isn't real important for what I want to do here. I just want to show you how these tools and such are made. And so going into edit mode, I'm going to select only these two vertices on this side. I want to move them towards the front to make myself a little um, edge here. And I could just move it and leave it and be done with it. But I'm going to need this size to match a few other places. So 
as I move this over, I'm going to watch down here. And there are going to be some numbers here. So let me move this over. And you can see the numbers, minus 1.6261. Um, I know that I want to have minus 1.75, enter key. And if I come and select just the top two vertices and open up my end panel, scroll down to the edge info length, with this edge selected, it's hard to see with the manipulator there, that this is 0.25. That is the length of this edge. So I just want to remember that for right now. Uh, it's only going to be important for a few little steps. I'm going to select this edge, which is in line with the uh, cursor where we started from. E, Y, to extrude it on the Y by 0.25. Now these two are exactly even. I'm going to extrude this now along the X axis by minus two points. Um, and that's actually like two blender units. And if I look into the front, I can tell that this is one blender unit, this is two. So I've just moved it over to, it just means I have a nice even number to start with. Now I'm going to extrude this, so E, Y on the negative 0.25, bringing it forward. And I'm gonna do it same thing on the negative X. So E, X, minus 0.25. There we go. So we're really um, symmetrical without using a mirror, without using a lot of guesswork. We just made sure that we had a nice number to start with over here. After you get this done, I want to go ahead and select these four top vertices, which are the opening there of that indented area. I'll hit F to fill in with a face. Going into Edge Select, I'm going to choose edges, or, uh, you know, going to the uh, mesh select mode is simple. You just use control tab, and it pulls this menu up, and I can go into edge select. That allows me to pick just edges to work on. I want to use a bevel on this, and I don't want to use a modifier. The modifier will do the entire object. I just want to do these two edges. So instead, I use control B, and I start to pull it a little bit doesn't matter exactly where I pull it to begin with. I'm going to go here in front view mode with number one. And in my bevel settings, you'll see that I've got an amount. Um, so I can take this amount and I can raise it and lower it. And that's just how far is this edge being moved in from where it was. And so um, find a nice number, a nice even number to work with just in case we need that number for later on. So I'm going to point in, put in 0.6 and enter key. I'm also going to change my segments to 3, 1, 2, 3 here. And I'm going to leave my profile at 0.5. Alright, so now what I do have here is somewhat of an arch rather than if I had gone with a lower number. It looks something more like a square with rounded corners. So I kind of like it when it looks a little bit more like an arch but still a flat area on the top. And that is, as we've seen here, that is what we've got here. An arch with a flat top. It doesn't look so square with just rounded corners. Alright, after doing that, let's go back into Vertex Select. I'm going to select these top verts, and I'm just going to extrude them on the Z a little bit. Give us a little edge here. And again, you can see that in the image. Here's the arch, and right here is that edge going upward. Again, we're doing this all by eyeball. You do not need to do this according to perfect numbers. So use your imagination and creativity. I'm going to use Control-R to add two edge loops on this edge. Control-R to add two loops on that edge. I'm going to go into Edge Select. I'm going to select this outer edge and this one and subdivide them, also using number two cuts. So just click here one time. Back into Vertex Select. I want to take these two top verts from that subdivision and line them up with this set of verts. And the same with these ones. I want to line them up with these ones on the bottom. So the easy way to do this and do it precisely is by using our pivot point, and that's this menu here, pivot point. 
If I use active element, that means I can pick everything that I want to line up, shift and click what I want to line it up to, and then hit S, Z on the zero, enter, and now they're all lined up. So again, choose the top two, select my active element, S, Z, zero, and two. I'm going to join these vertices so I have straight edge loops all the way across. So these two, selected, hitting J to join them. These two and J. These two and J. J. I'm also going to do them across the back. So the top two in the back, J. The top two on, or the bottom two in the back, J. I'm going to go ahead and show you that when I use Control R now in this area, it doesn't go beyond this yellow line. And that's because the arch face arch shaped face up here is an end gone, so the edge loops don't work there. Left click to confirm two, right click to center them. S, X to actually just pull them apart a little bit. So maybe something like that. I'll right click on this edge loop. And it did not go all the way around. Why is that? And that's because I have these um, uh, edges now. If I had done this first, let me go back and show you. See, if I do Alt right click on it now, I select the whole edge loop, but with those rings here going up and down, the edge loops going up and down, it stopped it from selecting all the way around. You can do it either way. Let me turn off my pivot point from active back to median where it should be. And you can tell my manipulator is in the center of my edge here take this one and I'm going to move it down to about there. I just want this to maybe be a nice square right around there. And this one is somewhere between a square and a rectangle. More of a rectangle, I think. Alright. Now let's put in those two edge loops going up and down and scale them on the X. And right around there is pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and go into face select, select this center face, and I'm going to extrude it on the Y and pull it out a little bit. And you can see the corner there. You can see how far out I'm pulling it. Let me turn off this edge. We don't really need those numbers on there. When I do an inset now, which is going to make this whole face shrink and have a framework of mesh around it, I want that framework to be about the same as this here is. So come over here, hit I, and push in. And right around there is good. Now I can hit E for a Y, extrude on the Y, and push that back. Again, these measurements are not written down anywhere, so it's all going to be about what you like. I'm going to use my right click and shift right click on these pieces that go around. Once again, I'm going to use I for inset. And there we go. All right. These faces down here, let's take these out because we want this to all be even. So let's delete those faces. Go back to vertex select and select these four verts. And let's do active element again. And in case you want guessed, it's down here at the bottom. So S, Z. SC0, enter. Cool, we got it. Let's go ahead and go back into face select mode. And on this outer edge here of that inset, let's go ahead and hold down Alt and Control and click up here. And you'll see that that makes it go all the way around. With that going all the way around, I'm going to hit E. Y and pull this out a little bit. And you can see how far out I have pulled that. Using Control R, I'm going to put two edge loops going this way. And it looks like it's four, but it's not. And that's because it's seen through the mesh and it's going around both sides of this arched area. So if you're wondering or if you're in doubt, right down here, number of cuts, two. Two, it shows you. So there's two cuts. Confirm it, 
and right click to center them. Now with my pivot point back to median, I hit S and Y to scale those two apart a bit. I'm going to go back into face select mode, shift click, it's just control click, or I'm sorry, alt control click to get that inner arch going that way. I'm going to hit E for extrude, and then with my right mouse, you can see I have an extrusion. I'm going to right click, and it snaps it back where it came from. So it's still there, it's just in the same place it was created from. And now when I hit S, I'm going to scale that out enough. Let me just go this so you can see better. I want to scale it out so it goes back, but I don't want to go so far back that it goes through the other side here. You'll see what I mean. So S, and you see how it goes back behind that other edge? We don't want that. But we do want to go back enough to give it a little bit of depth so that we actually know that that is indented. Going back into Vertex Select, let's select these four um, verts that are kind of hanging down here on both sides. And this is from the extrusion. We don't want to delete them, but we do want to do what? line them up with the bottom of our piece here. So we're going to use our pivot point to active element, shift right click on our reference point, S, Z, zero, enter. And that, folks, is the first piece of this build. So that is this actual piece right here. And I want you to go ahead and work on that, work on those tools. All they are is edge loops extrusions and we are um, moving things uh, according to the, a number you can pick your own number uh, also um, taking use of your active element uh, pivot point remember your active element will have a red dot um, if you select it and it is the last thing that you select and then you know that that is where the rest is going to be lining up to um, when you do S axis zero enter remember always to put your active element or your pivot point back to median point uh, that's really important because yeah that can like just mess you up a lot anyhow so this is the first part um, I know it doesn't seem like a lot was made but we used a lot of tools including the bevel um, get used to making this make it a couple of times Maybe make it a couple of times to where you can make it all on your own without looking at a video or notes or anything. And then we'll move on to the next part. As we go through these parts, it'll be a lot simpler for you to uh, follow along and, like I said, eventually start creating your own all by yourself. So like, share, comment, um, send through screenshots of your progress. I'd love to see it. And happy modeling.